reach marginalized communities in every corner of the country. The idea is to create leaders and not followers. Access must be created where it is possible. And there are small things each of us can do. At Law Seco, at Project Maverick, the aim is providing free training for law aspirants for all law interest examinations. And this endeavor of our under Project Maverick, we have been having this live interactive session. And in today's session, we have with us Mr. Avino Singh Negi, who takes current affairs with us. Today in this session, he is going to discuss a very, very important topics when it comes down to CLAT 2020. That is Chief of Defense Staff. I know by now, if you, if you are a CLAT aspirant, you, uh, a name would have gone in your head that uh, General Bipin Rawat and somebody would have started giving up these particular things like four-star general, somebody saying he received this, this many or medals, uh, he, he can do that. He works under a particular ministry. He's, he can do, he can, um, he can do, uh, what are his responsibilities? What are his roles? And how, and uh, why this particular position is so relevant when, uh, when we have such a, a border dispute with our, our neighboring countries. So to take us through this particular important topic, uh, Negi, Negi, sir has, uh, Negi sir has decided to take this particular class. Over to you, Negi sir. Hi. Um, one second. Hi, guys. Um, so in today's lecture or video, what I want to do is I want to talk to you guys about this important concept, which is the chief of defense stuff. Right. So um, I think it's fairly, um, I think it's fine for me to assume that by now you would have obviously read something about the chief of defense stuff. What today's exercise primarily is, is that we are going to cover a very small topic today, which is the chief of defense stuff. And I will tell you whatever important <clears throat> things there are in this that you absolutely have to know. Apart from this, what I also plan to do is in the second half of the video, we will work on a sample question. Okay, So now this sample question is something that uh, Harshwardhan had created a long time back. And it's basically along the lines of what is expected in a CLAT paper. right? So I've been telling you in the beginning that since the very beginning, right, there'll be a question on current affairs, wherein even if you don't read the passage, there would be some question that you can answer. And then some questions you'll be able to answer only if you read the passage. And apart from that, I told you that there might be a googly or two, wherein there would be completely random questions, which are somehow related to the topic, but not really related to that topic, right? So this question that Harshwardhan has prepared for us today deals with exactly that, right? And since it'll be a little shorter session today, I would encourage you guys to listen to what I'm going to say. And I'd read, encourage feedbacks and co your comments at the end of the video. So if you have something to say about this particular video or any of the current affairs videos that we've done in the past, we'd be glad to listen to you, right? Because as it is, we are going to make these videos for you. And I think it's best as in we'd also get to have an idea of how you uh, if you are appreciating the videos and if there are certain problems with let's say the speaking style the sort of slides that are being made etc and if you have any other contributions in the sense that you want to tell us about specific topics that you want to be covered or you want to tell us about how to go about a video etc so we would appreciate if you could contribute in the end so having said that i'd like to start with this with the topic for today which is the chief of chief of defense staff okay one second <clears throat> Okay, so the government of India has recently created this well hyped post, which is the chief of defense staff. And along with the post of the chief of defense staff, there has also been a creation of the fifth department within the Ministry of Defense. Okay, so as of uh, not now, now by that, as in when the CDS became an official thing and when the Department of Military Affairs was established, before that, there were four main departments within the Ministry of Defense. Okay, now this is the fifth department. Now, General Bipin Rawat, who was the Chief of Army Staff prior to this, has been appointed as the country's first Chief of Defense Staff. So the government has given General Bipin Rawat a proper three years tenure, right? Because the age for retirement as a Chief of Army Staff or Chief of Naval Staff or Chief of Air Staff is 62 years. And after that, the age of retirement of the CDS has been increased to 60. Five years effectively making General Bipin's Rawat tenure or any other CDS in the future's tenure to be three years. Okay, now the CDS will be a four star general or four star officer of the Indian Army and he will have a two fold role. Okay, so the first role would be that he would obviously be the principal military advisor to the defense minister on all tri services matters. Okay, now 
I want you to understand a little how the military military structuring in this country works. Okay, so as of now, the military in this country is divided into three arms or three wings or three services: the air force, navy, and the army. Okay, now army in terms of manpower is the biggest, uh, let's say, service, and that then it is followed by your navy or in the air force. So the sort of problems that we are seeing today in our air force and in our in our in our let's say tri services is that there is a lack of coordination amongst these services, and these services are effectively operating in silos. Okay, so and this is not something that has just been proposed recently. It's not something that came about in the last couple of years or so. The discussions on the formation of a post of the chief of defense staff, whose primary job is to make sure that the three services, the air force, navy, and army, can work together and they can coordinate better. Okay, so right after the Kargil war. there was a committee which was formed which was known as the kargil review review committee the point of the kargil review committee was to as in our army did a good job we defeated the intruders and we were we are we forced them back however obviously every operation brings about some lacuna in our defense preparedness and therefore a kargil review committee was formed now the kargil review committee gave its report in 1999 and it took a couple another couple of years for the government to form a group of ministers whose job was to read the committee report thoroughly and, and then give recommendations okay so one of the first recommendations that the government uh, the group of ministers who read the kargil review committee report gave was that there should be a post of the cds okay now the government initially agreed and then in the anticipation of creation of the post of the cds they created this secretariat for the chief of defense staff known as the integrated defense staff in 2002 now the idea was obviously that the integrated defense staff would later serve as the staff for the secretariat for the office of the chief of defense staff however there were certain issues there was certain let's say fault lines between the air force army and navy the air force wasn't very willing and they gave oppositions to the idea of the cds then at that at that time point of time the political establishment thought it better to then not go ahead with this proposal okay however after 10 years to this episode in 2012 another new committee was formed which was the naresh chandra committee now this <coughs> committee recommended the appointment of a permanent chief of staff of permanent chairman of the chief of staffs committee as a midway to eliminate the apprehension of cds what this means is basically the 2002 committee had put out a very formidable role for the cds okay they wanted to give the cds a lot of powers also now because they wanted to give the cds so many powers the political establishment of the day along with let's say the uh, the air force and the navy were not very well in favor of it however by 2012 the stance of him and the narendra chandra committee said okay that we definitely need a chief of defense defense staff in the sense that he will be he or she not she actually he will be the chairman of the chief of defense staff committee chief of staff committee okay chief of staff committee is formed of the three chiefs of staff of the army air force and the navy who are the highest ranking officers in their respective services okay now after 2012 there all after the recommendation of 2012 there was not a lot of political traction that this idea got however there was another committee that was that gave out its gave out its report in december 2016 this committee was known as the general db shekatkar committee okay and they also said that we do need the role and the position of a cds okay so this was the history behind the evolution of the role of the cds the idea of this cds is not a very new idea this idea came about in about 20 years ago and there have been a lot of discussions on this idea okay so now let's look at what the current role of the cds is as is envisaged by the cabinet so the cds is to act as the permanent chairman of the chief of staffs committee okay as i told you earlier the chief of staffs committee is formed of the chief of army staff chief of air staff and chief of naval staff so the cds will be the permanent chairman of this committee right and his core function and the entire idea behind the creation of the post of the cds is that there should be let's say an idea of jointness and there should be a lot of cooperation within the multiple wings or services of the military because up until now they have been operating in silos <clears throat> so apart from the fact that he will be the chairperson of the chief of staff committee there will also be another department as i told you known as the department of military affairs wherein he will act 
as the and in Israel, he will head the Department of Military Affairs in the capacity of a secretary. Okay, so his rank within the Department of Minister Affairs will be that of a secretary. And in terms of status, you should know that the status of the chief of <coughs> uh, CDS is of a cabinet secretary. Okay, now. in his role as the head of the department of military affairs the cds is given powers to prioritize inter services procurement decision in the sense that there would be certain procurements in terms of arms ammunition etc in terms of goods etc that these multiple wings of the multiple services of the army need to make now there has to be someone who has to rationalize and give priority to what we need because we as a developing country are have let's say limited resources in terms of what we can afford now obviously the big ticket purchases like ships aircraft etc will not be under the power of the cds they will continue to rest with the department of defense which is headed by the defense secretary okay now as the and in his capacity as the chairman of the chief of staff committee he will be the member of two very important councils and committees first is the defense acquisition council which is headed by the defense minister he will obviously give his inputs in terms of the procedure that has to be adopted for defense acquisition and the sort of equipments that are required then he will also be a member of the defense planning committee which is headed by the national security adviser so okay so this is broadly what the role of the cds is and is asked to be now apart from this there are other things such as the cds will as i told you he will be the principal military advisor to the defense minister on matters which involve all the three services okay now obvious so as of now the 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 main role in terms of the principal advisor of the minister of defense used to be with the temporary chairman of the chief of staff committee now who was the temporary chairman i'll just give you a brief idea in the next couple of slides okay so the cds his primary role will be when he will talk to the defense minister on only on matters which pertain to the joint effort by all the three services right so if there is a matter which concerns only the army or if there is a matter that concerns only the air force or a matter which concerns only the navy there in the cds will not have any say and it's only the specific service chiefs who will have to give their perspectives on the requirements or the or any sort of advice that has to be rendered to the defense minister would be given by these particular military chiefs because these are matters pertaining to one wing or one service of the of, of the armed forces okay now <clears throat> the cds will be given some authority to provide directive to the three chiefs in as far as the directives pertain to tri services command okay so when let's say there has to be cooperation between multiple services within the armed forces only then does the cds have cds have some sort of a sway or some sort of an influence over the other security chiefs however he is not given any sort of legal or operational command over any of the wings of the armed forces or he is also not given any form of let's say seniority over the other service chiefs so there is a term that is used is that the cds will be the first among equals right so it's not that the status of the chief of army staff or the chief of defense staff or the or the other chiefs would or the chief of naval staff would be below the cds that's not how it is designed he will his primary job is to make sure that there is better communication between the three services okay apart from this he will be the military advisor to the nuclear command authority now the nuclear command authority is basically chaired by the prime minister which handles india's nuclear arsenal and it is also in charge of india's nuclear doctrine so therefore cds has a lot of important roles to play and the cds has a lot of important jobs to take care of now apart from this the cds will also administer Sir, the tri services organizations or agencies which are related to cyber and space. Okay, now then obviously, if there has so CDS is also did the post is also designed in a way that the CDS will look into monitoring of contacts, promoting the use of indigenous equipment in line with the Make in India uh, policy that the government has come up with. And basically, the idea is to have a more streamlined production management and procurement procedure. Okay, now. apart from that the idea of, of cts is to make sure that there is a betterment or let's say some form of augmentation in the combat capabilities in the sense that see the thing is honestly speaking we have, have a very competent army air force and navy but as of now the issue is that from the the movement from let's say a 
good army to or, or to army it, to a formidable force is one wherein there has to be a lot of communication between these forces and the primary idea is that the sort of so we are at the peak of competence that we could have achieved without the existence of a post like the cds and now with the advent of the post of the cds the government envisages that there would be a lot of reforms within in these services which would make sure that india has a better combat capability to to respond to the sort of threats that we might see in the future okay so before proceeding further with regards to the rules and with regards to the powers etc of this cds and why the post is very important let's have a brief look as to how things functioned before the post of the cds was created okay so before there was a post of the permanent chairman of the cds the senior most of the three service chiefs okay by seen by order of seniority and in a rotated rotation order was appointed as the head of the uh, chief of staffs committee now the problem herein was that these people these temporary chairmen of the chief of service <coughs> the temporary sorry the temporary chairman sorry had to used to have a very short tenure because they used to obviously retire by the time their their turn came to become a the chairman of the chief of civil chief of staff committee okay now for example the last chairman who was air chief marshal dhanwa he only served as the chairman of the committee for a period of 4 months and if you serve as a chairman of a committee for a period of 4 months you basically take about 3 4 months to basically understand what your role is to understand what sort of powers you have what is the sort of expectation that you are supposed to be and by the time you start understanding what your role is you are bound to retire therefore there was a need for the cds in fact our late defense minister manohar parikar he had explicitly said that the current arrangement of the coc is basically an unsatisfactory arrangement and the chairman is only a figurehead because the of the fact that he remains there for a very short duration there is not really a lot of things that he can do apart from more probably going to ceremonies and cutting ribbons right so the defense minister came up with a very harsh take on the the way that things had been functioning okay and the sort of duties that have now been given to the department of military affairs these duties were now were in so far before the creation of the cds they were being looked after by the department of defense itself and the defense secretary was in charge of all of that okay so <clears throat> now let's look at what is the task ahead for the cds because the formation of the cds is very important in the sense that there were certain lacunes within our forces okay Let's say, for example, there is obviously one second. Now there is obviously the possibility, and not even possibility. There are realities that there are ob obviously inter-services rivalries. There were, let's say, lack of communication. There were, let's say, uh, duplication of assets. Right. Let's say, that, and and we used to have. as in we not used to we still have command structures that I'll explain to you in a bit that are not as efficient as they could be. Okay. so let's first look at what the cds has to do in the next 3 years okay so for the next 3 years the cds has been given a strict mandate by the government the so there is this term that you should be very well aware of this is about jointness in operations okay so the idea is that with the advent of the post of the cds there has to be a jointness in operations between the three services of the armed forces and these operations include logistics transportation training support services communications repairs and maintenance of the assets of the three services okay now <clears throat> another issue is that with as in what happens if with the let's say the propagation of jointness in operations is that we can go through as we go forward with the establishment of joint and theater command so, okay. so let me tell you the concept of a theater command okay so as of now what happens is let's say if you look at let's say the border with china there are three commands of the indian army that are responsible for maintaining the integrity of for borders with china however if you look at china there is only one command that is responsible for all of india's border and that is a theater command so basically a theater is let's say a zone of conflict or of a potential conflict that is identified by the armed forces or policy makers in that country and then there is an integration of all the services within that theater so as of now there the western command of the indian army the northern command of the indian army specifically indian army is responsible for guarding our borders and if 
there is a need for let's say intervention by the air force then a separate message has to be sent to the air force which might take time then the air force has to get its assets ready then it has to establish communication channels in the army and obviously a lot of crucial and important time is lost so however if let's say there is enough jointness in operations then we can look forward to developing some form of a theater command let's say we could have one theater command for all of jnk where there is cooperation between the air force and the navy let's say they share all the assets so they have one common hospital let's say there are they have one common logistical supply chain wherein the army and the air force are working together then let's say you have um, one defense contractor who's supplying spare parts etc to both the units right so as so there would be more integration and therefore it will also bring the cost of warfare down because as a, as as i told you before india as a developing country obviously also faces a lot of resource and money crunch right so these are the advantages that you can have in developing the joint theater command now general Bip Bin Rawat has been fairly active in developing the Joint Theater Command. Recently, it's been in news that by 2021, India will have one Joint Air Defense Command, which would be responsible for maintaining the integrity of the borders from the air. Okay, so the the Air Defense Command would basically be a combination of your air force and the assets of the air force and the army right so there would be better communication and they would less take less time to deploy similarly general bipin rawat has also floated the idea of a peninsular command okay which would be responsible for maintaining the integrity of the exclusive economic zone of the india of, of india right so as of now the eezs are divided between the two commands of the navy the western command and the eastern command so the idea is that let's take that's combine the responsibility and the assets and the logistic supply chains and the communication networks etc of both these naval commands and then let's have a centralized command which would be coordinated from delhi which would be responsible for looking after the exclusive economic zone so exclusive economic zone is basically an area of from to an area 200 kilometers from the shore of a country where it, from the coast of a country wherein only that particular country can engage in economically profitable activities so therefore they will elevate a lot of pressures therein and the role of the chief of navy would then be restricted to focusing on the indian ocean region so the indian navy and the other uh, the separate command under the indian chief of indian navy would then be restricted to focus focusing on the Indian Ocean region and therefore he'd be freed from the responsibilities of looking at these particular regions. Okay. Now another, so this is how the idea of a joint theater command is supposed to work. And obviously if the first thing that has to exist for a joint theater command to exist is, is interoperability, interoperability and communication between the forces. And, and that is the primary task of the CDS. Now, apart from the coordination between the services another important task of the cds is that the cds is supposed to work provide as in the cds is supposed to have a say in policy matters regarding the general defense of the country because the defense ministers and the bureaucrats in the defense ministry also need to have access to a seasoned military general right because if because let's say in the absence of a cds the other three uh, chiefs of staff are bogged with operational and day-to-day -day, let's say matters of their respective wings of the armed forces and now the cds can provide a better input to the defense ministry and therefore help in formulating policies so i hope this thing is clear to you now let's proceed to the second part of the video where we'll look at we'll try to look at a sample question and let's try to answer those sample question now this question is made by harsh so let's see the sort of job he's done okay so let's look at this sample question on CDS. And I think the questions that you will see will be along this particular line itself. So please be ready to solve it with me. I'll give you like 20 seconds to be ready. Ready? Okay. So let's first try to read what this paragraph here says. So General Bipin Rawat has been named the country's first X. Okay, so this word is missing. The X will be a four-star general. The principal... No! Really sorry. Okay, so just to shift
Hi, can you hear me, Harsh? Yes, sir. I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Yeah. Sorry for that disturbance. So let's start reading this paragraph. Okay. So it says, uh, General Bipin Rawat has been named the country's first X. Now this word X has been eliminated. The X will be a four-star general, the principal military advisor to the defense minister, and will head the new Department of Military Affairs to ensure jointness in training, logistics, and procurement of the three services. Now, if you paid attention to the lecture today, you obviously know what the X stands for. Okay. Then the second part says, the cabinet cleared a proposal for the creation of a new Department of Military Affairs. The DMA will be another department under the defense ministry. The X will function as its Y. So Y is also another word that is missing from this and is likely to have financial power. Okay. Now, the CDS will also head all tri-services institutions such as the National Defense Academy in Pune, College of Defense Management in Sikandrabad, and the National College Defense College in Delhi. He will also be the permanent chairman of the Chief of Defense Staff Committee and will be supported by the Integrated Defense Staff in the secondary role. Okay. So this is the paragraph that they've given. Now, after this paragraph, there are five questions that are given. Okay. So the first question is, in the above passage, what has been redacted with X? It means, what does X stand for? Okay. So now, obviously, this video is all about the Chief of Defense Staff. The answer to this question is B. Okay, Chief of Defense Staff. Now, the second question is something which is not really related to what we've studied, but it's a fairly good question that can be asked, which will test you, test your general knowledge about the armed forces. Okay. Now it says which of the following persons has or have served at the rank of field marshal, the highest attainable rank in the Indian Army. So, is there anyone who'd like to try this? Pranay Saval says so that is, it is, yeah. So there's Pranay Saval who says this is A, okay. And anyone else? Okay, let's just proceed. So yes, the answer is A. There have been only two people in the history of the Indian Army who have been awarded the rank of Field Marshal. One is General Field Marshal Sam Maneksha and the second one is KJ Field Marshal KM Karyapa. Okay, so Bipin Rawat and the current Chief of Army Staff, General Naravane, have not been given the Field Marshal rank. Now, Field Marshal rank is only a ceremonial rank or it is given in terms of in times of war. So, India has only seen one, sorry, two Field Marshals and the post of the Field Marshal is of a five-star general, okay? Now, so this question is not related to the passage, but if you have a general understanding and let's say general knowledge of things, you'll be able to solve such questions, okay? Now, let's look at question number three. Okay. So, in the above passage, the name of the position has been redacted with Y. What is the name of this position? So, let's look at what Y is. Okay. So, the X, sorry, let's, we are, they are talking about the DMA, Department of Military Affairs. The X will function as its Y and is likely to have financial powers. Okay. So, the CDS will function as the dash of the Department of Military Affairs. Okay. So the options are president, chairman, secretary, and manager. So let me I'll pause for 30 seconds if somebody wants to try this. So yeah. Okay, Avish. Yeah, Avishek and Pranay, your answer is correct. It's very clear that he will be in the position of a secretary to the Department of Military Affairs. Okay. So now let's try to look at the fourth question. Now, again, the fourth question is not related to this passage itself, but here also it is about, it's a basic general knowledge question. Okay. It's not even about having a knowledge of the Indian army or anything. It's a basic gender GK question. So who is the Supreme commander of the Indian army? A chief of defense staff, B chief of army staff, C president of India and D defense minister of India. I'll pause for another 30 seconds if anyone wants to try.
Yeah. Okay. So someone has said uh, chief of army staff. That's wrong. If you look at the constitution itself, or if you read about the president, the power of the supreme commander of all the armed forces in India, army, air force, and navy, is given to the president of India. Okay. So the correct answer, Arpit and Abhishek is yes, obviously President of India. Okay, so now let's move to the fifth question. Now this fifth question is an absolutely tricky question because it is out of the park, right? Like you are not supposed to know answers to questions like these. Okay, so at which of the following places was the new officers training academy for training of army officers established in two thousand eleven? Now it is absolutely not related to what you've read here. It is very unlikely that these things will come in the newspapers, etc. But this is something. If you know it, then you know it. There is not a lot of things that you can do to guess. Okay. However, there is one way to let's say <laughs> guess these things is that if you are generally aware, it talks about like Pune, Jabalpur, and Secunderabad. So you have had OTAs here. Okay. But these are very old OTAs, and I am. I was generally aware because I had a friend who passed out from officers training academy in Gaya, and he told me that this academy was started in 2011. Okay, so the answer here is D, Gaya. Okay, now there is absolutely no 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 way that you can answer this question by guessing. These are the sort of questions. If you know, then you know it. And if you don't, then I don't think there's a lot of there's not a lot that you can do. Okay, so this is pretty much it, guys, that I had to share with you in this video. So Harsh, if you want to say something, or if anyone else wants to comment, or probably like share some thoughts or feedbacks, etc., you are most welcome. Yeah. So uh, the reason being, uh, we can close this slide, sir. So the reason being that. Uh, Why? Why there were some questions which are not from the passage. The reason being that when a class consortium released the sample papers, uh, there was uh, there were passages on a uh, U.S. president, but questions were on Indian president. Now you see there was yeah, exactly, a contrast. Exactly, 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 exactly. Yes. So there And will be questions like this that that will stump people. वो उसका कुछ लेना देना नहीं होगा पैसे से उस टॉपिक से भी कुछ ज़्यादा लेना देना नहीं होगा. There will be one or two random questions which will test your absolute core general knowledge. And also to let you know that there there was this uh, you will you will be reading a particular topic a uh, RTI right to information. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the questions uh, you will be thinking they will come into the legal section but they will come down to the GK section. So this uh, this there is this pattern. Mm. they will parallelly uh, current affairs preparation and legal aptitude preparation because of the change in nature of the exam mm -hmm. so we have some kids with us yeah. uh, uh, ashish uh, ashish has uh, written to us in the chat box that he wants to talk to sir ashish hello hey ashish hello sir टाइपिंग so okay. we have uh, other kids also joining us so if if any of you wants to ask any question with respect to our and affair preparation or with respect to any of the sessions which we have done till now you can directly uh, type on the chat box and uh, uh, we will make it an interactive session so there there are people who are sharing their email ids like what, what are we supposed to do with these email ids i'm not i'm not sure Okay. so if you could like probably ask if if there are any specific queries that you have that we are here for the next five minutes i i i believe they were they need uh, we will be sharing with them the pbts and uh, they have joined it as a part of a webinar mm -hmm. program so th that way okay so uh, ashish is asking sir will it be fruitful to make monthly notes yeah of course and like i I'd, i'd suggest that uh, so obviously there would be a lot of monthly notes but i think i i i think you shouldn't be making your as in you can if you have that time but think about it this way you should be reading newspapers generally you should have a good idea of what is happening you should watch these videos that we provide because we try to give a broad concept about specific important topics now obviously there is a lot of 
lot of study material available in the market i think career launchers gives out free monthly material there are other youtube channels that give out free monthly material so you could easily refer to that so yeah monthly notes would be a fairly good idea but abhi itna time nahi bacha hai so we trying to look at the very important topic which can give you a short short question but otherwise if you can maintain let's say of a monthly register or you can refer to these notes that's a brilliant idea that's effectively how a current affair should be studied but i've told you in the, since the very beginning that your primary reliance should be be on newspapers because your notes are basically like capsules theek hai wo last minute hota hai ki ha is mein na khwar nahi pada to zyada notes pad lete but primarily you should be focusing on newspapers and there is no harm in going through these monthly notes definitely and also to let you know that uh, ashish uh, on your telegram group uh, which is of project maverick in the morning itself uh, before 10 am uh, we are update the suggested reading material as to what are the important topics which you should refer uh, in the news hindu and also there is a uh, thorough news analysis uh, videos which are in dokiko which uh, provide you with uh, the entire day important news in a summarized fashion so you can go through those uh, thorough news analysis which is available on youtube and also what are those important topics which you should not miss in the uh, uh, newspaper they they are mentioned in the such reading posted on your telegram group i share the link to the telegram group in the chat box uh ashish he will follow avishek says sir i have stick to the statesman cause in kolkata hindu is not mm-hmm. available so uh, so sir so, this is a this abhishek, is a issue made faced by people yeah. even i was in uh, i was in i was in bihar for a while mm-hmm. and uh, there was this indian express which i used to receive a day later okay Yeah. Okay. So, so Avishek, the problem is that I don't know how what sort of a newspaper the Statesman is, and obviously it's not as popular. So, like I'd recommend what you can do is let's see nowadays you you have those Telegram groups that send you like your Indian Express and Hindu etc. So, for example, day I don't have a physical subscription of newspapers. Every day around eight eight thirty a.m. I get my um, Indian Express and in- Hindu on Telegram. Then I use my laptop to go through them. So I I honestly do not know what sort of a newspaper Statesman is, whether it covers everything or not. So I do. So if if Hindu is not available, try to go for Indian Express. And if neither, if physical copies are not available, what you can do is you, you can try to find groups which will give you these like free pirated copies of the Indian Express in Hindu on Telegram. Uh, okay. To add to this, uh, uh, we are not supporting. Uh, that you follow these uh, telegram groups and download these materials what uh, what uh, i would actually uh, tell you is go through their website which is you can uh, directly type mm. the hindu on google the link will open go to their website they are imp- their news uh, you know as all websites have go and read that particularly but to uh, to say what uh, sir has uh, told you rather than uh, going through that i i can what i can tell you if you are if you have done banking with any of the private bank in the country right now they have got into this spree sir that they they have started sharing the newspapers pdfs of the newspaper uh, so like that okay. hdfc bank now hdfc bank nowadays sends us the email at 8 o'clock in the morning 7:30 with the with the pdfs okay. of the so they give newspapers okay yeah so that is more of more of a more of, it is that method which i will uh, propagate to the kids to follow or mm-hmm. there is another section on paytm uh, which is their pdf they make pdf available So I believe they have a they have okay. a, a relationship with these newspapers, which is both uh, legally and ethically mm-hmm. correct to follow. So you, you, yes, uh, of it, course. Also, you yeah. can so Hindu has this limit of I think twenty free articles a month. You can try following the Indian Express because Indian Express I don't think has any uh, this thing uh, limit as to you know, the number of articles that you can read. And Indian Express runs an official. Channel Telegram group, I think it's known as Indian Express Explained or something, wherein they themselves keep on sharing their uh, articles on Telegram. So I think you could try to follow that. Otherwise, I think the yes. Hindu has recently come up with this very cheap subscription. I think some eight hundred bucks for one year sub- of digital copies of all the newspapers. So if money is not a concern, then you can probably go for that as well. Because you are anyways paying for the physical copy of the Statesman anyways, I know you. Yeah, so uh, that is a that is a better way to approach taking the subscription. I guess if if it's yeah. 
Uh, also, you can follow the thorough news analysis which we provide. That uh, sit down for half an hour, sit with your notebook, mm. uh, follow up that, make brief brief notes, keep on revising, cr- try solving the uh, uh, quizzes which which are provided on your LMS uh, learning management support portal. So in that fashion, you can prepare for the G uh, for these. Uh, uh, so uh, th- uh, we have got a hand raised from uh, someone. Kusum Deep. Uh, Kusum, can you? T- uh, hello, Kusum. Okay. So as soon as I tried uh, that particular person to get in touch. Okay. So uh, that being said, uh, I believe, sir, uh, th- we will be coming up with an important uh, topics notes also. Like today, mm-hmm. I've come up uh, on the Telegram group. You have got important topics for VAT, written ability test for SLAT. so in that okay. in that uh, by that you can start preparing for vat and also we have got a request mm-hmm. that uh, we should come up with the th- last 30 days strategy for flat 2020 uh so in my personal opinion it, it is all my in my personal opinion i state that still i don't believe that there are just 30 days left otherwise i would have come up with this particular thing last 30 days strategy mm-hmm. uh but still uh, we will come up with a week wise strategy and share with you uh also we have a question sir please tell your telegram page name the telegram page name is uh, project maverick i am sharing the link with you and there we also give you the question of the day the word of the day these things are also follow along with the class schedule which are absolutely free but the and uh, the link to the course i have already shared with you so that being said uh, i believe uh, if anybody wants to add something you can um, uh, t- uh, type your questions and queries in the chat box so that uh, we can go ahead sir is there any last tips cause it's a end game uh <laughs> i don't know man like you to just take read work hard as much and more than hard work do smart work um i, I to take so honestly this clat is fairly different from the sort of clat that i gave for as i told you in the beginning it will be a paper speed itself so i think you can practice reading you can go for take short notes one thing i'd suggest is that uh, for current affairs particularly refer to only one source okay so let's say there are five different websites that come up with their different current affairs okay or there are three four different newspapers so stick to only one newspaper and stick to only one website or one forum just focus on what these people tell you agar wahan se question aa gaya theek hai nahi aaya it doesn't matter because otherwise if you keep on let's say going through multiple sources you'll be wasting a lot of time and that time can be invested better in a lot of other things so i would suggest that stick to one source to for everything like for your let's say legal aptitude also don't read five books go for one for current affairs go for one source for anything just put stick to one source that will save a lot of time for you Uh, uh, that was that was an advice uh, which we must follow uh, with this i i think that uh, we, uh, we can end this session we are we don't sure. have any questions to follow thank you so much sir for joining uh, joining us and taking this particular topic serious to the kids tomorrow we will be live with you on a very very important topic again which is sabari mala case uh, we understand that how important it is because there will be uh, we will be talking about right to equality we'll be talking about right to religion we'll be talking about a review petition we'll be talking about the constitutional morality all this and the history behind this particular case the issues discussed discussed by the honorable supreme court and the entire gamut which revolves around this particular topic sabari mala wala case join us tomorrow at 4:30 pm for a live interactive session on this particular topic Till then, take care. Thank you so much, sir. Bye. Okay.